Welcome to my first full-length tutorial. What better way to start learning than with an RPG Star Wars game series? Everything you will learn here can be applied to other games. Not just Star Wars. I just happen to love Star Wars. Make any kind of game you want. In this first tutorial, we will rig a character and hijack the skeletal system of the UE5 mannequin. You've probably seen the rigging part before, but you may not have seen how the rest of the process is done. Also, stick around for the end of the video. I have a bonus tip that I know you'll want to see, so no more waiting, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we are going to want to do is go to the Accurig link I left in the description. This is where we will download the rigging software. The download and installation are completely free. Some of you may already have this software installed. Just follow the installation directions and you shouldn't have any problem. Next is the auto setup plugin for Unreal Engine 5. This plugin automatically assigns the skeleton and shaders to the character as it uploads it to Unreal. I will show you how to get the plugin into Unreal Engine in just a bit. The final download is the assets I have to start the tutorial. You'll find them on my website, stargamestudio.com. In this package, I have included an unrigged character, as well as a fully rigged character, in case you have any problems with Accurig on your computer. There are some lightsaber meshes and sounds, as well as an animation for later tutorials. Just unzip the package and find the FBX for the character, the X2RG FBX is the fully rigged character, and the X2FBX is the unrigged character. So, once you have everything downloaded and both the Accurig and the auto setup programs installed, open up Accurig. Next, click on the choose file and find the unrigged character. Click open and wait for it to upload. Now that the character is uploaded, click the force symmetry so that the character can be rigged the same on both sides. Click on rig body and wait a few seconds. Now you can see all of those dots. Those represent the joints in the bone structure of the character. You can move them around to get a more accurate location of the joint. Once you are satisfied with that, click on rig hands. Now. The pop-up asks for the number of fingers on each hand. In our case, it is five. You'll see a lot of dots on the hand for the hand bone joints. We can move them around to get the best locations for those joints. Just make sure you have the dots where the knuckles would be on a human hand. Accurig does a good job. You just may need to do a little tweaking on it. When you're finished with that, then go ahead and click Finalize Character. The character is now rigged and animated. We don't want to download any animations with this character, so click on the A pose to get it into the correct pose for Unreal. Now, we can export the character. Click on Export, Export FBX, then select Unreal. Just leave the max texture size at Original. Download this FBX file to a location you will remember. If you still need to install the Auto Setup iClone plugin, go ahead and do so. After it's installed, open the Reillusion folder, then open Shared Plugins, Auto Setup, Auto Setup for Unreal 5.3, and finally the Plugins folder. Copy the RL Plugins folder and find your UE5.3 Engine folder. Open that folder and go to Engine, then Plugins, and paste the RL Plugins into that folder. You're all set. Let's make a game. Now that we have a character to work with, let's open up the Epic Games Launcher and create a new Unreal 5.3 third-person game. After the project opens, go to Plugins and install Character Creator and iClone Setup.
Go ahead and restart the editor. Okay, there's one more thing we must do to prepare to import the character into the project. Locate the CC shaders file from Auto Setup, go to Reillusion, Shared Plugins, Auto Setup, Unreal, Auto Setup for Unreal 5.3, and then Content. Copy the CC shaders file. Paste it into the content file of your project. Okay, now we can run the game and make the UE5 mannequin run around. Let's create a new folder for all the files we will add to the game. Right click and make a folder and name it underscore core. Let's change the color so we can find it quickly. Inside of core, let's create four new folders. Name those folders animations, blueprints, rigs, and weapons. Open the rigs folder and click on import to. Find the character FBX file you rigged in Acarig and upload it to the project. An options window will open for the shader type. Just select the standard shader and click OK. Next, the FBX import options window will open a pop-up. Leave the skeleton type at none. And then under advanced, click use T0 as reference pose and import morph targets. Click import. The character and all its materials will be imported. There it is in all its glory. The Acarig character is rigged with the UE4 skeleton, so we need to find a way to use the UE5 skeleton along with the IK control rig. Here comes the fun part where we hijack the UE5 mannequin. From the content folder, open the characters, mannequin UE4, and then the rigs folder. Copy the IK UE4 mannequin and the RTG UE5 Manny, UE4 Manny E files using Control C. Paste these files into your Core Rigs folder using Control V. Rename the IK file to X2RG. And the retargeting file to RTG UE5 to X2RG. Change the preview mesh to X2RG in the IK X2RG file, then click Reset. Notice the IK bones snap into place. Do the same for the RTG and find a run animation to preview. As you can see, the X2 behaves the same as the mannequin in the animation. Now, go to the Content folder, Third Person, then Blueprints. Duplicate the BP Third Person character file. Rename the file BP underscore X2. Drag the newly made Blueprint file into your Blueprints folder.
Right click and create a new animation blueprint. Set the skeleton to X2 skeleton. Rename it APB underscore X2. Open the ABPX2 file and then the anim graph if it still needs to be opened. Find the retarget pose from mesh node. Hook it up to the output pose node. Click on the retarget pose from mesh node and in the details panel, change the IKRE targeter asset to RTG UE5 to X2. Compile and save. Open the BPX2 file and click on mesh. Add a skeletal mesh as a child of the mesh. Rename it X2. In the details panel, set the anim class to ABPX2. Set the skeletal mesh asset to the X2RG. Notice the meshes overlap each other. With mesh selected, go to the details panel. Search for VIS, uncheck visible, and find the visibility-based anim option and select always tick pose and refresh bones. This will ensure the child of mesh animates. Compile and save. Open the third person map. In the world settings tab, open the selected game mode and change the default pawn class to BPX2. Save all, run the game. As you can see, the X2 model behaves exactly as the UE5 mannequin. And now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I will show you a bonus tip. This tip is how to make the character run and turn by using only the mouse. Let's get started by opening the content folder and then the third person folder. Go to input and open the actions folder. Right click and create a new input action. Name the action IA underscore mouse move. Open the file and change the value type to axis 2D vector 2D. Save and close. Now, open the IMC file and add a new mapping. Select the new mouse move we just made. Click on the keyboard icon to change it to the mouse icon. Make sure the left mouse button is selected. Open up further and create a new modifier by adding an array element. Set the index to swizzle input axis values. Save and close. Go back to the content folder and open the core folder. Open your blueprints folder, open the X2 blueprint and go to the event graph. Under the jump event, search for IA mouse move. Select the one from enhanced action events. Right click the action value pin and select Split Struct Pin. Scroll up to the Movement Input section and copy everything in the box, except the Move Input Action node. Scroll back down to the Mouse Move node and paste the copied nodes. Connect Action Value X to the top green wire and the action value Y to the bottom green wire. Drag off of the triggered pin and connect it to the add movement input. Save and go to the third person map. 
Run the game and press and hold the left mouse button. Congrats, your character moves without the keyboard. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe to see more upcoming videos in this series, as well as other useful content.